This is your video tour of the Sudan SIL compound. This is the fence. It looks the same from the inside as it does from the outside. It's basically a chain link fence with bamboo through it. Keep the visibility down. Right outside is a dirt road. <clears throat> and then if you look beyond, you can see that there are houses and places right over there is a if you look on the top of that fence you can see a large pile of rubble <clears throat> what happened just a few weeks ago is that they had these grass houses in there and the government gave notice and just came in and said this isn't your land and they just took their houses and pushed them into a big pile. And that happens around here a lot. As I turn around, this is the fence line. If you look to the straight ahead here, this part where the fence comes out, there's a well on the other side of that. And so this allows people from houses that don't have their own water to come over and get some water. And so this is actually part of the SIL compound but they make that available to people around them. They recently expanded the fence line because what happened before people were using the shower or using that well and showering and they would drive in and people would be standing there showering which wasn't exactly convenient. These are a couple buildings that are used for translation. This one on the left is new and it is under construction at this point, it's a cement block building. <laughs> this is a building that is in use right now. It's used for translation. There's offices all the way around. It's basically cement block construction. Separate rooms inside. So this is the road coming in. Straight ahead is an area where they burn the garbage. That's pretty much the way they take care of garbage here. Walking a little closer, we can start to see the edge of the compound. This building over here is the one that we have been working on. I'll show you that closer in a little bit. We can kind of go to the right here and get an idea what some of the uh, houses look like. If you look over there, you can see the some of those houses that were actually the type that were destroyed. There's a strict regulation in Kenya of not taking pictures of any government official or any government facility, and so we have to be very careful about using the camera. Okay, we're right at the fence at the old fence line now, which becomes the entrance to the compound. This is the building that we've been working on. Um, this is where they park the trucks basically two trucks that get people around. This area in the middle is a shop area right now, but it'll be converted into a meeting room when they get a lot of this construction behind them. This is a guard house. They always have a guard at night. This is the other side of that building that's used for translation. There's also a conference room in the end. Okay, so here's the building that we've been doing the work on. Basically what we're doing over here, these used to be offices. Originally they were living quarters, then converted to offices, and now back to living quarters. Um, I should say they were originally constructed for living quarters. I don't know if they were if they were living quarters right away. We can see the sign there that says SIL office. Please enter. Um, we're putting in a ceiling on that side and then new kitchen cabinets on both sides and then lots of painting. This is from the center of the compound and so when I turn to my right these are the guest houses that the, uh, the two maintenance and construction people live in right now. Otto and his family and Matt and his family and so this is their home 
in the back is the building with the light on. You can see the light means that the city, that the electricity coming from Juba is working. If the electricity wasn't working, or if the phase that that light's connected to wasn't working, that light would be off. And inside of that building is a generator that can be turned on. They have a certain schedule that they turn on the generation. And so they don't run it just all the time, but they run it during the schedule if the power is out. Here's the dining area. And again, the guest house area. This is the dining area. And the kitchen. This is a rebellious 18 year old who found his way on our trip. This is Mert. He's a long pant brown shirted biscuit. Look cute, Mert. This is Dan, who does have a last name. His name is Sandberg. This is that part of the dining area as well, but most of the time we're just eating over here. This is the hallway in the guest house, right out in front of all the individual rooms. Each two rooms has one bathroom, so you connect to it through your own door inside. And so all the way down the hall, see all the different rooms here. I think there's eight different rooms. Refrigeration is quite a luxury and a nice thing. There's a freezer, so what they do is they, they take the filtered water that's used for drinking and they put in blocks of ice and that helps to keep it cool. This is where the water is put so that we can fill our water bottles. So they have these different places throughout the area. <laughs> Here we have a guest host. Her name is Julia and this is her room. Here we are, room three. Yes. And come on in. We, everybody has a single cot. And underneath, this is a box spring. It's kind of woven with really strong string. And we have a mattress on top of that. And mosquito netting. We push, push two together for those of us who are married. And we have a big table, a window with, that we never close. And we have window with screen on this side as well for some ventilation. So what are the cans for? I don't know these cans. This, this is for any snacks that we have. Um, we have to keep our snacks in the cans because otherwise the rats will come. So we brought a lot of little drink mixes and things to mix with the water. We haven't seen any rats here. They they don't come around very often, but... Tom brought his own garlic salt. Yeah. Um, whoops. What else? Come look at these really nice big closets that we have. All our clothes in there. Lots of room to put our stuff. Um, another big built in shelf. And we've got a little sink over there, a little mirror. And this is the door into the bathroom. Want to see the bathroom? Here's the bathroom. So, what you do when you're in the bathroom is you lock the door to the other room so they don't come in on you. And then, when you're done, you unlock it. Otherwise, if you forget, then they let you know at 3 in the morning. This is a shower on the right, and the bath toilet on the other side. Ceiling fans are quite a necessity here because when you have air moving, even when it's really hot, it's much better than when it's not moving. We also have a smaller fan here that we use to kind of blow closer to the bed because it, it's very hot at night and it's a miserable time to to be uh, trying to cool off. For the most part, it's been pretty tolerable. The worst thing is when the power goes out at night and then the fan's not able to run. That's when it gets really miserable. So this is from the steps of the dining room by the guest house. Just kind of looking back over the compound area and gives you an idea of where we've been at and where we'll be until this coming.